Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the second episode of Crypto Basics here at the Satoshi Club. I am your crypto sensei for today and let's just get straight into it with, first of all, what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So we're going to discuss what exactly a crypto wallet is, how you can use it, different types of wallets out there, different wallets that you can download yourself, how to use a wallet. And at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you the top 10 ways to keep your wallet as safe as possible. Because safety and obviously securing your money is the most important part in the whole cryptocurrency world, right? So what's the point if you have a lot of money in a wallet if you don't use two-factor authentication and somebody could just hack you like this, right? Very important stuff. If you enjoy the video, as always, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below if you have any thoughts or opinions for me, and let's just get straight into it. So this is a Coinbase article on what exactly is a crypto wallet. A definition of a wallet is that they store your private keys, keeping your crypto safe and accessible. They also allow you to send, receive and spend cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum or any altcoin out there. Private keys are a very important term. It's basically passwords that give you access to your cryptos and make them safe and accessible. You should never share your private key with anybody out there because if you do, you can basically just give them access to your wallet and hence give them access to your money. Now, this is where two factor authentication comes into play, for example, because if they have access to your wallet somehow, if they get your private key, if they want to send crypto off of the wallet or to their own wallet, for example, they won't be able to do it unless they have your email address as well or your phone number or another type of authentication, such as, for example, Google Authenticator, which is, uh, you know, what I would recommend you probably do, because if you use three-factor authentication, which is what I like to call a uh, trio fantastico, you're pretty set in the crypto world. Now, there's different types of wallets. There's hardware wallets, there's software wallets. Let's just get right into why crypto wallets are actually important. So your holdings actually don't live on the wallet. They live on the blockchain and they can be private key accessed. So accessed only using a private key. If you lose your private key, which is also another risk of having a crypto wallet, it basically means that you lose access to your money altogether. So you need to keep your private key safe in some type of space. Now, there's different type of places where you can keep your uh, private key and it depends on what type of wallet you're actually using. There's paper wallets out there where keys are written on a physical medium, literally on a piece of paper, you know, a sticky note or something like that. You can write it down, you can keep it in your drawer or something, and it will always be there in case you want to access your own wallet. This makes using crypto a little bit harder because what if you're not there? Or, you know, what if you take a photo of it and then you defeat the whole purpose of having a paper wallet and having the security of it being completely offline by, you know, taking a photo of it. So it's also dangerous, but it does come with some benefits such as, you know, it's right there. You're the only person who can see it and uh, paper wallets just exist out there. Now, hardware wallets such as the Ledger, which I'm going to discuss a little bit later, are keys stored in sort of a thumb drive or a USB drive, and it's kept uh, completely safe and only connected to a computer whenever you want to use your crypto. So you should only use these hardware wallets when you connect it to your own personal PC, and you should make sure that there's no malware on it, obviously, because anybody using a ledger will typically be having a lot more uh, significant amounts of money in their wallet. So you should invest in an anti malware software as well, uh, probably, right? Just to keep your funds safe, because keeping your funds safe is the number one thing. Now, just a little break right here before I continue on. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the like button. Check out my previous videos on the side here. This is episode two of Crypto Basics. There's going to be a lot more in the future. So if you want to check them out and stay tuned with everything else I'm coming at you with in the future, subscribe down below. Now, online wallets, third and last type of wallet, they're keys that are stored in an app or software. So you should look for one that is protected by two-step encryption or two-factor authentication, however you like to call it. It makes sending, receiving, and uh, doing anything with your crypto basically very, very easy. So it is the wallet that a lot of people prefer. Now, every wallet has its trade-offs. For example, the ledger is something that I would use if I had a significant amount of money that I need to keep in crypto and completely safe. Ledger is the safest option out there. But on the other hand, if you want to be very liquid and very mobile with your money, you should probably use an online wallet or perhaps even keep your money on an exchange. If you have a cash flow going in, uh, cash flow going out, you can keep your money in an exchange and not worry about it too much. 
obviously do use two or three factor authentication whatever you can do uh you know the more the merrier basically because then you protect your funds from any type of malicious attack or anything going on now a few things that wallets actually allow you to do is manage all your digital assets in one secure place they allow you to control your own private keys send and receive crypto from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection well unless you have a ledger actually in that case you can connect to your pc in any case and check your wallet status but i do believe you need an internet connection if you want to send the money anyways interact with usernames rather than long hexadecimal public key addresses so a wallet makes the user interface very easily easy because you can choose for example your friend or something and send him some crypto by uh, his name instead of just copying and pasting his address browsing the apps as well and shopping at stores that accept cryptocurrencies so now coinbase is shamelessly plugging their wallet right here which is okay coinbase is a large crypto exchange in the us but the largest one is probably binance so uh you know you should probably just know that um the main coinbase app allows you to buy and sell crypto whereas the coinbase wallet is separate and allows you to store your private keys and also send and buy uh and spend uh, actually without buying the actual crypto so you can send receive and spend digital money now there is a bunch of different wallets out there for example if you head on over to ethereum's official website you can see that they have a lot of different options when it comes to wallets that accept ethereum for example ledger is right here it is the number one hardware wallet out there you have the unstoppable wallet token pocket mu wallet all of this stuff you do have metamask as well which is a wallet that you do connect to the top of your chrome browser as an extension and then basically once you press it uh, as you can see it's right here uh, once you press it you can just simply open it up when you're using any type of d app or any type of thing that accepts crypto online and you can use it pretty easily now there is different types of wallets on different chains out there for example nami and Yoroi are two wallets that you are able to use on the Cardano blockchain if you want to purchase Cardano NFTs, if you want to do stuff with Cardano, and generally if you believe in the Cardano ecosystem. So it's something that you're able to do. Also, you're able to head on over to Binance, for example, create an account, keep your money in your, uh, well, I'm not logged in right now, but uh, you keep your money in your Binance wallet, basically. I think they have their own wallet, but they also have their exchange where you're very liquid, you're able to trade, you're able to move your money from spot trading to futures trading, for example, and staking and all of this other stuff. So it does provide you with a lot of accessibility as well. You have the hardware wallet of the century. This is the Ledger. So you have the Ledger uh, Nano X, for example. It's a very small version of it. You have it in different colors and it's basically a thumb drive that you're able to plug into your PC. So once again, if you're holding a large amount of money or any type of significant amount of money to you, you should probably be using a Ledger wallet. Anything else, you know, quick cash flow, uh, holding a little bit of crypto here and there. All of these other online wallets are perfectly fine, but, you know, just be careful and use two factor or as much authentication as you can. Now, the top 10 ways to keep your crypto wallet safe is, first of all, to use a cold wallet. So hot wallets are wallets connected to the Internet, such as Exodus and MetaMask, which I mentioned as a Chrome or browser addition. Cold wallets, on the other hand, are offline wallets not connected to the internet, such as a USB device, and they are the preferred and safer way uh, to use an actual wallet, such as the Ledger. Second of all, use two-factor authentication. Third of all, keep your seed phrase in a safe place. So a seed phrase is a collection of 12 to 24 random words generated by a wallet service such as MetaMask. They give you these words, and in case you forget your password or in case you want to access your wallet from a different browser, you need to type in those keys. So keep it in a safe safe place and don't lose it from yourself that's also important right keep a strong password change it frequently very important as well keep your investments in multiple wallets to diversify your risk you know if one of them gets hacked well uh you know you didn't lose all of your money at the same time so not all of your eggs in one basket avoid crypto scams something that seems too good to be true or basically anything pumping or dumping something on social media platforms be very careful and i will teach you a lot more about this throughout this channel's future you do have staying vigilant of phishing attacks as well so if you see some suspicious looking email don't open it don't put your info in and definitely don't put your wallet info inside use a secure internet connection anti-malware all of this stuff always double check the recipient's wallet address as well in case you're sending somebody crypto if you take the wrong uh, address right it's just going to send it to somebody else or if you use the wrong network it's going to send it to somebody else so networks is something that i will discuss in the future if you want to enjoy it if you want to check it out 
subscribe down below. And lastly, use updated antivirus programs, which is what I've mentioned before. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little insight into wallets. You will learn a lot about cryptocurrency. If you stick around with me, hit the bell icon, like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And lastly, I'm not a financial advisor and you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the crypto, NFT or blockchain world. So thank you all for joining in for another one. And I will see you guys in the next video.